lot of fun. Last week was a lot of fun. We talked a lot. I lost my voice, as you can see. Uh, no, seriously, if uh, if you um, if you haven't watched week one, if you, when you have a chance, go watch uh, week one. But I'll repeat a few of the things that I said at the beginning of each video of week one. Uh, first, this we are streaming this live. We are live in the chat, but the, the content of this video has been re pre-recorded earlier and we've edited it so you get the most amount of information in the shortest span of time, all right? So what we are about to see is edited. Now, we are live in the chat. If you've got questions, ask the questions in the chat. We're going to be responding them. And either we're going to be pointing you in some of the videos last week, or we're going to respond the question right there in the chat, or we're going to let you know that the topic that you're asking about is, you know, about to come in a few days, whatever it is, all right? So on Friday, though, same thing, same thing each week. On Friday, we're going to have a live Q&A session. That is going to be 100% live. You can ask questions. I'll be there answering questions for you, as well as Alex and Tony. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Um, so without further ado, today we're going to talk about two things. First, the three musical forces. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a, a whole, it's whole new way for you of looking at music and music composition. It simplifies every process. You're going to love it. It's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to break some blockages that you may have. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. And then we're going to dive into positive emotion style or love type of music, all right? All right, so we're going to start. But before we start, the structure of the class, as I said, three musical forces first, and then we're going to have the positive emotions. Now, in this side here, the positive emotions, love, here's the structure of the class. First, I'm going to define the style. So I'm going to be talking about... Uh, in terms of like harmony, we're going to use this type of chords. Orchestration, we're going to voice the strings like this. We're going to have the woodwinds here. Melodically, we're going to use these as scales. Rhythmically, tempo. So the music theory side of things. Uh, really the boring part, but very important. All right? And then after that, I'll turn around and you'll see me composing. I'm going to come up with a sketch first, and then I'm going to give you some time for you to replicate what I've done. That's the most important part. So I'll do music theory first, then I'll apply the concepts, I'll create the piano sketch, then you'll replicate the piano sketch. You can do, uh, uh, you don't have to do the exact same sketch that I've done. You can come up with your own sketch, but I'll give you 10 minutes or so for you to be able to replicate the same sketch that I've done. And you'll see me uh, writing uh, like pencil and paper and also on the sequencer, but you can you can use any method that works for you, and then I'll continue and orchestrate, and I'll finish up, and uh, at the end we'll have sort of like a, uh, a love theme or something like this. All right, and th at that point the class will end, and then you will have time to finish your you know to orchestrate your sketch. All right, that's kind of like the plan. Uh, with that being said, let's get started. In general, we don't accept, we don't we don't take advice from from other people because. We want to do things the way we like and we, the way we feel comfortable doing them. And uh, it's not until we try things that we don't want to do that we become a better composer, a better person, whatever it is. So in, in, in music, we generally tend to stay in the zone where we feel comfortable and doing the things that we know how to do. And it, it, it's usually hard to try things that we don't know how to do. It's challenging, it's just challenging. but. Um, if we don't face the uncomfortable, we don't advance, we won't grow as a composer, as a person. And so, as a composer, we always have to learn new things. And so, uh, but learning new things means studying, trying, testing, and then master it before, it, you know, before it becomes like a tool that you feel comfortable using. And so, I wanted to share with you a system that beginning, it makes like, it, it seems like it, it doesn't make that much sense, but it's just like in, it's, it's, it just frees your mind in terms of, you know, what things can you do and can't uh, musically. And it doesn't like, it's like, you don't, you, it's a way of thinking um, when it comes to composing that it's gonna, it's gonna free yourself in a, in a way and it doesn't matter if you know how to write um, uh, let's say more like if if you've never written, for example, like dodecaphonic music or like more contemporary music, you can and or if you are locked to the white keys uh, or you know no matter what limitation you've got, uh, this system will hopefully free uh, free you up a little bit. Anyway, uh, let me just um, share my screen. 
And so I'm going to open Cubase here and I'm going to open the template. So I'm going to keep resources limited in terms of the template that we've been building. Uh, so far, I think we've got like 25 tracks max, I believe. And so where is it? Why is not saving it? Okay. Open another. It's loading different instruments that we loaded the other day. So we've got the, the fast action patches and the strings. Cool, yes. So uh, this guy, I'm gonna create a folder here for the strings. Take your time, okay. So, <clears throat> so yesterday we talked about complexity and how much is too much. And we were talking about how to create separation. Um, so the different musical ideas, the listener, the person who's listening to the music is able to actually understand what's going on musically and it's easy to separate the different ideas that are going on at the same time. Now, music doesn't necessarily need to be several ideas, it can be one idea. We talked about the concept of keeping it simple. Now, how much, how complex could we get? In general, I think that like human brain goes one, two, three, many. Okay, so we can hear one person talking. We can hear two people talking. Then when we get to, you know, the three people talking, if we make an effort, we can understand what's going on, even though, even though it'd be hard. Four people, it's just crowd. It's just, you know, it's just a bunch of people talking at the same time. So with music, it's the same thing. In general, it's one idea, two ideas, three ideas, maybe, if you focus, uh, but then, then it's many. It's like, okay, it's just a bunch of musical ideas going on at the same time. Okay, so, um, so that's, that's one concept. The other thing is, um, what types of musical ideas, or so what types of musical layers are there? And here's how I see music in general. And this is again a system that it just, um, it works for, it works for two purposes. Once you've got like, like too much, <laughs> sometimes you've got too much knowledge, from like, a, a, you, know, you know you know how to compose, you've been doing it for a while, but sometimes you're like, okay, this piece has to be awesome. And you should think about the ideas of how you're gonna build this and then you're, you're overcomplicating things. This is a way to simplify. And uh, this is also a way to, if you have, don't have that much, sorry, sorry, sorry. If you don't have that much experience, uh, it gives you like a starting point, okay? So a musical passage can have up to five elements, okay? It's not, we, as a, as a human beings, when we listen back to this, five elements going on at the same time, it's gonna be like a lot of information. We won't be able to actually uh, pay attention to the five elements at the same time. But um, musical passage can, can have up to five elements, in, in my opinion, okay? So just take this, this is, this, this is a system that, it's just when, when I was composing, 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 I've, at, at some point I realized that this is how, it, you know, how my brain works in, in, the, in the background sort of thing. Um, I think, uh, when I think about music, I think like, okay, music can have up to five layers there. Uh, these are no, uh, so up to five elements, these are not actual layers. They are more like musical components. They can either be combined or not. Um, meaning it, it can have up to, but also you can have just one, all right? So um, those five elements are direction, movement, background, and enhancer, and bass. And you can take a read of, uh, you, you, can, you can read this, I'll, I'm gonna share these slides with you. But basically, and I'm gonna keep this simple, um, direction is anything that creates, like musically creates direction. And it, you can associate that as a melody, right? Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a melody. So direction could be something like what we created the other day that, cr that, uh, that moves us, musically speaking, from one point to another. Like if we've got a scene, it's like what, what does, you know, we've got this scene, it's got this point, a and point B, but we've got a climatic moment here. What's, what, what, what is doing, what can we do musically that, that connects this point A to this climatic moment and moves us for in that specific direction? Um, or, you know, anti-climatic moment. So what, so the other day we just created, it, was, it wasn't a melody. Just something like this, I'm gonna just uh, uh, solo this track. This part here, let me just configure something because I'm just...
close all. Yeah, maybe this one. Yeah, no cancel. Well, uh, <laughs> it'll work for now. Anyway, whatever. Okay, cool. So this is creating direction. Basically, we're creating tension by adding more nodes. This, this somehow creates direction. We also have the expression going up and modulation going up, which is increases volume, increases uh, dynamic, you know, cross fading between the, uh, it is increasing the dynamic from mecha piano to fortissimo. And it's very simple. It's not a melody. It's just something that creates direction. It this will be one layer. And sometimes something like this, simple as that, can work. So that is one layer. Just keep in mind that with this, you know, type of approach, it's like, what do we need musically? This, mu this is thinking music when we are composing music. It's thinking in a way of we are look, we are like, what is the outcome that I'm going after, and what does the music has to do so I get that outcome, so I achieve that thing that I need to 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 achieve. Okay, right. And, um, and sometimes we do have to write this awesome piece of music that's it's gonna be like a masterpiece, right? But sometimes the music doesn't have to be that complex and in fact complexity, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's, uh, it's not gonna be helping the, the, ult the, what we have to achieve musically, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's one direction. Direction could be uh, uh, whatever, okay? Um, it obviously could be a melody. So this sort of this melody just of uh, sort of like brought us to different places, right? Um, but it, it clearly has a direction, a few directions. All right, cool. So, uh, so that's one thing, direction. The other thing is movement. Movement is usually associated as a, this is the rhythm part of the music, right? Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be rhythm. It could be. It's anything that creates movement musically. It can be rhythm. But that it also could be some like harmonic, um, like a harmonic background type of like strings, like two chords going back and forth. Like. All right, so just so something like that, and uh, and see on top of that we can we can on top of that we could record something that creates direction. So just think about anything that creates some sort of you know thing that makes the music flow. Think of the motor the motor of that goes below whatever thing else that goes on on top on top of that. Okay, so those are like the main two most obvious elements, right? There's always something that creates direction, there's always something that creates some sort of movement or um, many times, there's, there's many times something that creates direction, many times something that creates movement. Then this background, uh, I call it glue sometimes, and it's this thing that we don't hear that much, but it's there and uh, it's, it's subtle, um, but if we, get, if we get rid of that, we, it, it's like we, you don't hear it until you, if, but if you take it out, if you remove it, then it's like, oh, something's missing or something was there that now it's missing. It's when you compare um, that, um, that you realize that it was there. It's that thing that's behind sort of the mix that usually connects different elements together, okay? So it can be anything. It can be just a long sustained soft strings note. 
it can be um, it can be a long clarinet soft note it can be whatever it is it can be a it can be a some some like harmonic background as well uh, whatever it is that creates that that support basically and then we've got enhancers and then uh, enhancers in bass so basically in the past it's like my, my brain was like okay these are the four elements and then i just added this one because like bass especially if, like bass is so important just added it as a, as, a, as a fifth element um it's in a way it's built in each one of these but just um bass and I'll get to talk, talk about this in a second. Based sometimes in each one of these elements, you can have it or not, and it increases the emotional impact. Uh, so I added this as, 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 um, as an element here. And then we've got enhancer. Enhancer is anything that creates a sparkle or air candy. It's like the string branch is the, the fast, uh, what we have purchased is the fast, um, um, fast short, you know, um, motif, like woodwinds, high, like high woodwinds motifs here and there. It's all these things that create um, you know, it's like the woodwinds fluttering around behind, or you know, behind a soaring melody. You know, cymbal, piatti, all these types of things um, that enhance a specific moment. It's a uh, it's a timpani and grand casa hit that enhance a a low brass staccato, whatever it is. Okay. Um, so that's that. That's that's the five elements. And that what that, that what you know this. It, if you if you just again sometimes we. We do things in a way because we are used to do it. Then, then you know, in a specific way that we are told, hey, you know, you should try this, you should try that. And then, as, as you, we, we sort of try to reject what we are told, you know, to do. Um, just give it a try because it frees you a lot. Let me just let me see. This is a new template. It doesn't have all the key commands that I all the key commands that I have. So I may I may I may be a little bit slower. But um, the good thing about this template is that allows me to because it's just so small it's so easy to to to, to load more stuff let me just uh, it's gonna be cool whatever um i'm gonna um, i'm gonna, gonna load something here So, so I'm going to start with background. I'm going to create something that creates background that gives me a little bit of support and I can write stuff on top. Okay, so I'm going to change this to beat bars and let's see. So here we go. sometimes that's enough for like so that creates background I'm gonna do something that creates some sort of some sort of movement and then I may grab the piano and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some sort of uh, this is not gonna be tunnel so I'm gonna create I'm gonna I'm gonna um, select a few notes that create sort of like this pitch class set This is
Right, so movement. And obviously we would enhance all this later on, but I'm just gonna compress velocities a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna create direction now. I'm gonna go up. This is gonna be like the climatic moment, and then I'm gonna go down. So, um, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna somehow make the texture a little bit more dense, and then I'm gonna relax from here to the end. Uh, it, it's gonna be subtle, but there we go. Let me see what we can do. Oh, I've got an idea. I've got this um, cello tremolo. That I can uh, I can control. Um, oops, where is it? Yeah. I can control um, like regular tremolo and sul ponticello. So that's what I'm gonna do. No. So that helped a little bit. I'm gonna add some high string towards the middle sort of thing. And I'm gonna use the, uh, this one here. And it's gonna be with non vibrato. So this, a lot of, oh, in fact, I'm gonna transition from non vibrato. It's gonna be super soft. No vibrato to more vibrato. More vibrato to, and a little bit more trick the listener's mind and I'm gonna tell them that this that this guy is far far away and so I'm gonna this is okay I'm just gonna go very large cathedral it's gonna be a super long river so now we are we're going beyond sort of like the or like the traditional orchestral sound, and this is a, this is a little bit more sound designy. Uh, it's a hundred percent reverb, so we, we are not gonna hear like the, the strings as they are. So it's, this this works more like an like an effect. Piano's gonna need a little bit of that as well. I like this one. Uh. All right, so we have the strings. Where are the All 
Okay. Yeah. So that's one, and then I'm gonna come in with the cello here. Cello legato, like here. So that's that. And I'm going to enhance this part here with some low end. So it's going to be something like. So we've got this, we've got this, this, and this. We can enhance this with something. Yeah, we can. I'm gonna uh, just uh, cluster. I'm gonna use this guy. Team, oh, look at that. Uh, team player rolls, match of forte, match of forte, match of forte. Team hits, team swells, team swells, match of forte, match of forte. This guy here. I could be adding more things, 
And I think I'm, I'm gonna stop here. So we added, uh, you know, we, when we were thinking about music, we were like, okay, what are the different parts that we could, that, you know, the different music, what different elements, different uh, components. And so we've been adding, initially we started with this, well, we started with this one, just to give us some support. And then we added the direction and uh, the movement and direction. We had a li little bit of enhanced, uh, sorry, we, we added a little bit of bass here and there, and then we enhanced it. And now we are not thinking, um, you know, it, this is what is a way to simplify composition. This is a way to simplify um, orchestration, even. Um, so we didn't have to, you know, so we didn't, it's like, this goes a little bit beyond, beyond the, you know, knowing the theory. I didn't, you know, I didn't, obviously this is more like, it's, it's a dark type of a cue, and uh, it's not tonal. Um, and obviously if you're writing like, tonal music, you know, to, you gotta know about harmony and all these things, a little bit of counterpoint. But if you can, you can also play a little bit by ear if, and, and using this system. Um, just wanted to come in here today and compose life a little bit, just uh, present this sort of, th this, this system. And it's not a system, it's just a way of looking at music. And if this is useful for just one of you, then, uh, then that's good enough for me. So yeah, so at the beginning, usually we, the, start is cla the, the class starts with five, 15 minutes of me defining the style. And I'll go and I'll explain, okay, today is love, right? So we'll tempo and rhythm, then harmony, then uh, melody orchestration and all this. And this usually takes like f five, 15 minutes, 20 max. And then the second part of the class is composing. I'll compose a little bit and then it's, I'm gonna give you five, 10 minutes to replicate what I've done and we'll go back and forth a little bit. So let's, let's do that, let's, let's get this started. Cool. All right. So, hopefully, um, you can attend this class and just listen to me, and that's it. Um, you'll learn. Um, if you if you are open to the, like the interactive part, which is when I give you time to actually try the things that I that I showed, um, then um, you'll learn so much more. If you choose to do that, hopefully, you have your sequencer in front of you, and you have at least. At least a couple of tracks. Um, one with a piano, and then another one with sustained strings, something like. All right, just like a sustained strings patch, like one, a patch that has like the entire string symbol. Um, for now, um, as we progress and we see other styles and all this. Um, having more individual patches like the violins first, the violin second, etc., or a flute, stuff like this will be useful. But for now, for this class, for now, uh, this is one of the most simple styles. So for now, just having piano and strings um, will do. Okay, so, so let's talk about the style. Let me just go to the piano one more time. It has a ton of reverb. Let me just, let me just bring down the reverb. All right, so um, the first three styles that we're gonna see are slightly similar, especially the first two styles. We're gonna see love and then sadness. And uh, as we start with sadness and suspense, we'll talk about the differences, but the love style is gonna set um, like the basis, um, like the fundamentals of the next following styles. So let's define it, it's super, super simple. Um, so in terms of, and whenever we define a style, we, we'll talk always about these four things, right? Um, tempo and rhythm, harmony, melody, and then uh, orchestration. And this is basically um, something that I call um, style modeling, which is, you know, like, like the, the concept of, you know, if you wanna, if, if you have a goal or if you, or, or if you wanna achieve something in life, uh, just look up, you know, those who did it and model what they did, so this is like the concept of model what works. So with music it's the same thing, right? If there is something that works, then like find a score or find music um, that is in that specific style or in the style that you would like to write on and then analyze the score, see how it's done and then model. It doesn't mean copy 
uh, it's it's use the things that they used, but in in, in your own language. Um, I've done that with many many mini styles, and many of them we will see um, in this class. Um, so at the end of the day, what you see here is nothing special. It's just me putting the time, analyzing several scores, and trying to find what are the commonalities between those scores, so we can write in that specific style: love, or sadness, suspense, thriller, whatever it is, right? Adventure hero. Um, so tempo and rhythm for love. Usually it's going to be slow, without without much rhythmic accompaniment. Um, we're talking maybe 60 to 100 BPM, so something slow. Um, the type of notes will be quarter notes and eight, eight notes. And usually the time signature is going to be like a regular 4 4 or a 3 4. Okay, those will work. So, very, very simple. Um, in terms of harmony, super simple as well. Um, it's going to be mostly in major modes, um, so just like the like the standard major or Ionian, Lydian, but let's let's for now think just like major. And when I so we've got the, we, we've got these two big modes, right? We've got the major mode and then the minor mode. Um, we will see tomorrow uh, next week when we talk about sadness that is very similar. The main difference is going to be it's, it's going to be a minor mode, and this and and, and and you may think well, this is obvious, um, and it is. Um, Things will start to become more subtle and more complicated as we, as we start studying other styles. So it's going to be major modes. Um, we're going to mostly use triads, and, and we're talking about something like this, like so. This is C major. I'm going to start with C major to make it simple. Something like this, right? Something like this, right? What, what was I doing? So basically, just try that in a major mode. Um, and I am the, the way I'm connecting those chords is I'm not stepping outside of the the key. In this case, C major. I'm using the the main three chords. So it's the first, the fourth, and the fifth. So it's C major, F major, G major, right? At some point, I went to the minor six, which is which is A minor. Right, but but it mostly it's just diatonic, tonal, major triads, right? <laughs> right, this type of thing. Um, if you get any question, just stop me at any time, and, and feel free to ask a question. Um, happy to answer. So basically, that's that. super, super simple, and that's the first style that we study because because it's it's one of the easiest ones, and in a way, it's the the one that feels more natural to most of us um, because it's the type of harmony that we learn at the beginning. Um, so so you, that's why I, I chose this one. So in, during the pre-training, I said a major chords, positive emotions, blah blah blah, and then I said when adding extended notes, right. Um, in a major context, so for major chords, when adding, when adding extended notes, uh, it, it adds character and sometimes enhances the positive emotion. So, going back to the love uh, slides, uh, love style slides, um, here, common extensions are 9, 7, 6, plus 4. Um, and what that is going, while this is not mandatory, um, what this is going to do is it's going to enhance, it's going to add a little bit more of that emotion to um, to this style. So in this case, so for example, the ninth would be something like, again, C major. Right. Right, I'm just, I'm just... Uh, just landing like if this is C major, this this is the ninth, the ninth, right? This is gonna be the ninth of the F. Uh, sorry, this which is G is going to be the ninth of the F chord, right? So, so all these things. Um,
right? This da ding is the four, the four that goes to the third. So anyway, result suspensions are common progressions like the nine, the nine usually goes to the eight, seven to six, six to five, four to three. So for example, uh, it's, it's how do we resolve that tension, right? Like this, these three notes are the main notes of this uh -huh. C major chord. If we had a tension or an extension, right? Usually, where does this usually go? So this would be the nine, the nine, this one, that would go to the eighth. So the nine. Got it, okay. Um, or... Right, the seven that goes to the sixth, the sixth that goes to the... to the five, and this is the most common one, four to three. Um, Fourth, right in this, right. Um, so that's you know to extend a little bit more the, the harmony. Not needed, but if we sometimes if we are going for something a little bit more lyrical uh, or we need to enhance the emotion, well, these notes can can can, can come ham handy. Um, mostly, it's going to use diatonic progressions, which means just keeping it tonal, right? The first, you know, this is the C major, first. To the fourth. To the first one. This is the fifth. To the first one. That was the minor sixth, to the fifth, to the fourth. Diatonic. Um, if we want to step outside of the of that key, um, we can alter some degrees, um, and those are the common ones. The third, like the flat third, the flat sixth, and the flat seventh. So something like, for example, uh, I'm going to go with it, with this one. Okay. So if I did something like again C major, so the first. setting the, the key because as, as I bring this one it's gonna sound a little bit not weird but but it's gonna be noticeable so I just want to make sure that we all are in C all right so that's what I did That's basically what, what what happened here. Yeah. Mm. Right, so I just brought this one. Mm. All right, so these things. But but again, those uh, so, th these are the options, right? But th that doesn't mean that we have to use all of them. Um, cool. All right. So, now, the melody. What, 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 what was I doing, basically? So, um, so the melody is going to be built around the chord tones, which means that if, you know, if we've got, we've got this chord, well, the notes that we're going to be using for the melody uh, are the ones contained in the chord. Um, now, the non-chord tones, so the non-chord notes, the common ones would be passing tones, an A-book tone, um, and I'll, 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 I'll do some examples here in a second. Um, but basically, yeah, well, I'm, let me just do an example here real quick. So it's not, like, it's not like, so the type of melody is a melody that is using chord tones of the chord that we have in this specific moment, and, that's, and then not big jumps. We can, but it's not, we're not going to do things like... Right, it, 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 that could work as an accompaniment, but generally the melody would be passing tones. Right, 
right? So it's just connecting the notes. Right? This kind of thing. Cool. So that's that for the melody. Um, and in terms of orchestration, it's very simple. Basically, uh, love is going to be like a good starting point. We could think about this, and uh, I'll explain more. But as a good starting point, we could think about this as piano and strings. Right? We can have the piano doing the melody and a little bit of accompaniment with the strings giving some support. That would be like the starting point, okay? And, um, and that would work. Now, if we expand that concept a little bit more, we are talking basically um, strings giving support to the background, so the, har the harmonies, and the melody using is being carried by a lyrical instrument. A uh, lyrical instrument can be a piano, as we said, but it can, it can also be a flute, a clarinet, um, a solo violin, a viola, maybe a solo cello, sounds very lyrical and beautiful. Um, and that's it, or, or other instruments, but a lyrical instrument. Um, we can have the harp here to like enhancing the, the harmony and adding a little bit of movement in the background, doing arpeggios, for example. Uh, now, if I, I'll explain this, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat what I'm saying, um, and I'll reread everything that's in here, but, but just bear, bear with me for a second. So basically, we're talking a lyrical instrument for the melody and uh, strings for background. Um, we have the arp to add a little bit, a little bit of movement. Um, so that would be for like the, like the when, when it's small, right? When it's not like super emotional moment, like climatic moment. Um, now, if it's a little bit bigger, then that lyrical instrument that we said it can be a piano, a solo, a lot, like a solo cello or a flute or a clarinet, something like this. Um, when we go bigger, then the orchestration is going to go bigger as well. And then we're going to be talking maybe for the melody and not a lyrical instrument, but this time we could have the, uh, the violin section, the entire, the entire violin section, instead of just having one solo violin or one piano or one flute. We can have the violins one or the violins two, or the violins one and two unison, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit bigger. And maybe uh, for the background, instead of just having the strings, we may have the strings and they can maybe bring a little bit of soft brush to add a little bit of... Um, of, uh, of weight, and maybe we can have some mid-low woodwinds to add a little bit of color, all right? And now, when we go, the bigger we go, the bigger the orchestration is going to go, and for the melody, instead of having, uh, let's say, violins one and two in unison, we can have violins one and two in octaves. Um, we'll, we'll get there. I'll, I'll explain the, the same thing that I just said, but I'm going to read here the, um, the, the slide. So, harmonies can be played either by the string section alone, or um, if it's a little bit bigger, um, a combination of mid-lower strings, like viola, cello, and bass, um, then low brass, like for example, uh, trombones and tuba, very, very subtle, not, 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 not like forte brass, but rather like support, supporting brass type of thing, so like a mezzo forte, mezzo piano, and, and low woodwinds, like bassoons and, and bass clarinet. Now, uh, harmonies can also be enhanced with the R playing arpeggios. For the melody, when it's, when it's a small, a lyrical instrument will do it, like a woodwind, clarinet, oboe, um, a horn, solo horn, um, a piano, like a solo violin, solo cello. Cella esta is good. Um, now, if it's a little bit bigger, then a single string section, like the violins one, or the violins two, or the violas, uh, or the cello section. Now, if it's even a little bit bigger, then we can have a combination of uh, a single string section, plus having, let's say, maybe, for example, a, a flute to add a little bit of color, or a nobo to add a little bit of definition, right? It's, it's, uh, things like this. Um, if it's even bigger, then we can have the upper string section, like, let's say, uh, violins one, two, and viola in unison, octaves, if we need it to sound bigger, um, or double octaves, like having the violins one, violins two, and violas in octaves, doing the same thing, right? Um, and if we need this to be a, even even bigger, then we can we can add um, we can add woodwinds to to uh, the upper string section during the melody. Okay, so that's that. Now for counter melody, if we have a counter melody, we can you know the the, the horns is very very common. Why? Um, 
Well, because the, the, because the, the range in the horns will work very well for the counter melody. If we have the melody aquí, uh, here, right, in octaves, for example, then we can have the horns. The horns, um, the, the horns range is usually this, right? This is the highest the horn usually goes. It can go a little bit higher. This is the middle C, by the way. Middle C, up an octave, that's sort of like the, um, like the highest safe, high, highest range for the horn. It can go higher, no problem, but usually this would be the limit. Um, so in this range, the horn sings beautiful. If you go lower, it's darker and we don't want a darker tone. If it goes higher, then it's a little bit more tense, which is nice for more heroic moments, but for love, here it's nice. So if we have the melody in octaves here, um, then having the horn here is nice because we have the melody and the counter melody and these two different ranges and there are no conflict uh, between the, the two lines. That's why um, something like the horn works very well. Um, the English horn would work well as well, like the English horn is like the is like the low oboe, right? Um, it also it, it would also work well. Um, the clarinet would work well as well. Um, uh, the viola or the viola section or the cellos for the counter melody would work well. So um, English the, the, so yeah horn English horn low register clarinets viola um, upper register cello um, the entire the entire horns section or solo horn or horns. Uh, section um, and that's it now if it's the super big emotional climatic moment we can have um, fast runs with the with the highest strings or, the, or, or or woodwinds doing runs going up and down for the most climatic moment to add flutter and ear candy okay so now up until now all this is theory let's let, let's, uh, let, let's let's make this happen and let's let's actually create let's actually um, yeah let's, let's try this now um, step by step. I always like to include like a step by step. Um, you don't have to follow it, um, but sometimes we, sometimes you know, we are not inspired. We have writer's block, block, and, and this can come handy. Usually, I start um, the step by step is first of all set the tempo right if you're composing for a specific scene, um, and then like the right tempo for that for that cue, and then. I usually either start with direction or background. I either come up with a sketch and I write the melody, like, or the other way around. You are, maybe I'm like, I'm gonna go like, like, it's like cool. This is gonna work, and then it's like cool. As, as I have this, I usually start with direction and I, I write the melody. Sometimes I come up with the melody and harmony at the same time, like the like direction and background elements. And it's like... And, that, and, 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 as I, as, and as I have something, then I either write down the sketch or, uh, or I start orchestrating. It depends on how complex the music is. All right, so this would be the step by step. Um, sometimes these are like the four to seven, sometimes you don't need them. Uh, because it's, it, it has to be small and simple and we don't need that much. But if it was like a, like a big, like a full minute or minute and a half love piece, so you can see like a full, you know, blown orchestral um, love cue, okay? Um, cool, all right, so let's do this. So I'm gonna show bars and beats, NJ. Uh, so the first step would be setting the tempo. The tempo that I've got at the moment is 75, so it's good. Um, yeah, that's gonna work. And then I'm gonna come up, come up either with um, either with the melody or the harmony, so direction or background, um, or maybe the two of them at the same time. Do I have any? Yeah. And you know what? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch here, so you can see what's going on. All right, let's do this. So. So this is gonna be, um, so it's gonna be. Da, da, di, da, da. So this is a four four. So four four, and it's gonna be. It's gonna be like C D da 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 
First inversion. Um, yeah, okay. I think it's gonna be C. Yeah. Ready, ready. So do re, do re, ti, do da, do do. Right. that goes to the three, right? There's a three, not a five, uh, three, yeah. I'm gonna record this. Super, super simple. Yeah. Danto, tato, tum, parom. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Tarom. So. Tarom. Tadum, tadum, to, tom, torem, this is gonna be torem, torem. So it's gonna be an E minor, and it's gonna be an A minor. And this an F, super simple. So again, from the beginning. All right. And then, so those, these are four bars, and there's like sort of like sort of like the first part of the theme, and then the second one is gonna go here. But I didn't have a space here, so I'm gonna move down here, and then I'm gonna do. All right, let me see. the C major, D do ton tam. Look at, ah, uh, uh, this is gonna, uh, yeah, this is gonna, let me, do uh, rom, do rom, tom, tirem, 
tire ton ton en a toro don tire taro da da di do do da toro don tire tire and this is an F F chord and this uh, so um, what what we've got here is so these notes are in the chord. I've got the fourth here, which is totally fine to have the fourth. Uh, let's go right here, the fourth. Mm -hmm. And then we have here, we've got um, this, which is the ninth, right? And then G, four to three. Oh, this, ah. I'm gonna record this. Mm. Yeah, let me just bounce this. Let's see. Ta -ro -ra -ra -ri -ro -ro. Let's um. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna let me see. Yeah. I do not quantize when writing something like let's say like a legato, like a long note string type of thing, like a legato strings line or a legato clarinet, something like this. Now if it's like an ostinato, something like piano, something like this, I yeah, I, I could definitely quantize. Now, if I would quantize this, I would quantize it, I would have to do like 16 because there's is no tanto, pero, um, I always quantize um, at 60%. It's a very small up here. Um, it's 60%. Mm, so if I if I quantized, see, I did quantize, but it's not perfect. Um, it just right, it, it moves it a little bit closer to the grid, but not 100%. Um, sometimes sometimes when I quantize it helps, but sometimes the what what happens every single time to me is that if I quantize right away, like for example here, if I, quant uh, I selected, I selected 16th notes, right? Mm -hmm. And because if I quantize now this, and I hit quantize, this note, the first one, was moved closer to the 16th note earlier. Than, so th this one should be here, right? So what I have to do always is, is like select everything, then move it a little bit over here and then quantize and then everything works. And that, that is why most of the times, to me, it's like, I, it's just like I, I finish composing, like I record the line, I hit quantize, and it's like, oh! The, the reason why this happens is because there is a latency in the system, and uh -huh. so uh, we list, to, the, the click does not have any latency, but when we press a note, this note, the, the keyboard itself has a little bit of a MIDI delay, so when I press the note, there's like a message that gets sent, boom, the USB to the computer, the computer receives the message, sends the MIDI to the sequencer, the sequencer sends the MIDI message to the sampler, which is contact, the sampler uh, triggers the audio, which is in the hard drive, triggers the audio, boom, um, the audio uh, gets sent to the speakers, you know, the audio interface, um, then the, uh, the the converter digital to analog and boom to the headphones and that happens in milliseconds all this but there is a delay and so because um, because our ear gets used to that delay real quick our system basically what it does it it compensates the ear knows that there is a delay because when I hit since I from the hit till I get the sound back to my ear my system understands there is a delay and so the muscle automatically will compensate and will, will perform for a few milliseconds earlier so what I hear in my ear aligns with the click but because the click doesn't have any delay uh, then the MIDI notes that I'm recording do have a little bit of delay and so after the you know after recording this it looks like this and then I have to go in here, move it because of the delay compensation that I did in internally, right, in a way. And so then I can quantize and then everything will work. Does it make sense? You, it's, it's, it's a little bit technical, but, but hopefully it, it, it makes sense. Um, it, this, I use Studio One and I'm able to offset everything by like 25 milliseconds and it works perfect. Exactly, exactly. Boom, you know. 
So you, you record and then after recording, it actually moves a little bit, right? All the MIDI? Uh, yeah, it just does it. You don't even see it. Exactly. It just happens. Yeah, yeah. It's like in the setting somewhere. Yeah. The yeah, Cubase, has, see, that's, that's a thing that with Cubase you can do, but it's a pain in the butt. Um, and it's, more, more, it's like a macro that you have to do what, um, yeah. Yeah. Another thing that it, that is, let me just open the template real quick. Okay. Another thing that is um, very useful um, is to add a little bit of negative delay. Now, this is not what what you mentioned, which is uh, you know offset, which is when you should record the notes and then those notes will get moved like twenty five milliseconds or like this or whatever your your system latency is, uh, which is very useful. So I didn't have to go in there and move the notes every time. Um, now, when you have everything quantized. Sometimes it, it, what happens is that there are some instruments that have a slower attack than others. Like, let's say like in a snare drum will have a faster attack than the, the lowest strings, staccato. And so it's, it, um, um, it's nice to have a little bit of negative delay to some tracks and that is um, like, like minus three milliseconds here. Uh, so when you quantize everything, everything aligns a little bit uh, because there are some instruments that have more, have, have more delay than others. So, so, so that's what, what I have. Um, I'm going to give you 10 minutes uh, to come up with an, with, with an sketch. You can either replicate my sketch or you can come up with your own sketch. Um, and then we'll come back after 10 minutes and we'll orchestrate this a little bit. Okay. And, and that'll be the, the end of, of this first class. Um, any question before I move into and to set, to set the timer? Um, Mark, how do you deal with, uh, uh, do you put rubato in slow? Uh, music like this. So if it's a very very slight rubato, it's mm -hmm. it's into into the the, the, the performance, um, and then I don't quantize. And if I need a little bit of like 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 a real rubato and I need to change tempo, then I literally go in the the, the tempo track, which is this one here, and I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do the rubato. But uh, what do you recommend, I or like I, I should say, like how, what what do you usually do? Like especially, I, I'm talking about more like the performance legato. So of course, like on the score, it would it would be <laughs> you don't really see the rubato on the score, but to make it sound more musical, I tend to add rubato in the recording. So or should I just do it add into the tempo change? So here, yeah, that's. Um... So if it's very, very subtle, then do the rubato um, mm -hmm. and, and that's it. So that's the sort of like the compromise with, you know, this, with technology. Um, usually the way it works is we'll do the mock-up, right? Then the mock-up gets approved by the direct, director, producer, whoever it is, and then record with the orchestra. And when we record with the orchestra, depending on the style, if it, uh, sometimes we, I don't know if, if maybe it's like, I don't know, action, maybe action high intensity, it will be like a hybrid sound where we have um, the orchestral melodic instruments and also some epic percussion, maybe some synths and stuff like this. When this happens, we are locked to the, to the click track, to the, like the, to, to the tempo that we established uh, because the, the orchestra will, will record um, yeah. maybe like the melodic instruments, uh, the string ostinados and all these things, but we have some prelays all the percussion, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's all samples, the synths and all that. And so while this enhances the sound and, 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 and enhances the orchestral sound, it, you know, the downside is that we are, we are locked to that tempo. And so um, in, uh, in film music, the rubatos and all these things are, when, when, when that is important for the performance, usually it's recorded with free tempo, meaning there's no click track. And right. then we use we, we use um, clicks and pops, uh, which basically is uh, the way this is done is um, when you are done composing, you'll export the MIDI as a, the Pro Tool session for the scoring stage. And then the conductor, the day of the recording, will hear the first four clicks. So click, 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 and then it starts conducting. And then with those four clicks, you know, the, 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 direct, the, the conductor gets a sense of the tempo. And then mm -hmm. in a specific moment of the scene, their scene is projected. Um, and then there is like a line that crosses the, 
the screen and then at the end of the when, when it ends crossing the scene there's like a dot which is the pop uh, so streamers and 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 pops and um, and that is, that is telling the, the conductor here there's a sync point so this is conducting and it does the robados and all these things and then when they when the conductor sees the streamer it's like okay here's the right and in the score says in this specific bar there's a pop and they can see the streamer which is, is saying hey the pop is coming at the end of this bar right and then boom and it's a little bit more complicated and it requires a little bit of practice but that allows the music to be more fluid and that type of music and that type of style of recording with the streamers and pops is done when there is nothing else that has to be synced with the orchestra um, so that, that would be the way if it's a mock-up and you truly wanna the, the feel of like a, like a like the, the rubato, then usually we program the tempo change. And if it's very, very subtle, then we just, we just have that instrument do a little, a little bit of rubato, which is possible if we've got instruments that do not sing together too much, like let's say, like long note strings accompaniment or background, and then a piano, no problem. But if we have the piano, like we've got the same thing, strings, long notes accompaniment, and then we have piano, arp, and celesta, then it's a little bit more complicated. And we just have to make sure that when we record the piano maybe first and we do the rubato when we have the arp on top of that with maybe an arpeggio and then to the celesta and you know supplementing the piano with a whatever it is maybe just uh, yeah mm -hmm. doing the same melody then in that performance we you, you know we would have to try to make the three of them to to go together in that rubato moment Does it make yeah because uh, my i i am very used to just uh you know recording with the rubato in the performance but i i do understand there is the it can get a little complicated because once you record with the rubato then you cannot quantize and exactly. you can also another thing is like uh if you want to just you know convert to the score it becomes complicated because then you know the the notes are not gonna be in tempo it is possible so, it it it's a hundred percent possible um so, so a story real quick, when I finished, um, uh, back in 2010, finished USC and um, I did my first movie and then I finished the movie, so that means that no income, right? And so I started doing any job that I would, uh, that they would give me, right? And I was composing for the, ass so it was like, it was the uh, Jeff Majin, which is the orchestrator, had an assistant and I was helping the assistant, right? So I was the assistant of the assistant sort of thing. And basically, um, uh, the assistant was doing the MIDI cleanup, and the MIDI cleanup is um, the composer will do the will do the composing, and then will send the uh, when it's done composing, will ex it, you know, the composer will export the MIDI for the mm -hmm. orchestrator to do the orchestration. But before the orchestrator orchestrates, there is someone, usually the assistant, that does a MIDI cleanup, which is opens the MIDI <laughs> in the sequencer and gets rid of um, all the key switches, quantizes everything so it aligns, and then we don't have like a 30 second notes, like weird notes in the score and stuff like this. So it's like MIDI cleanup and then prepares the score so the orchestrator can orchestrate. So long story short, we were, we were um, I was doing the MIDI cleanup of uh, music that the composer composed without a click trap. So it was beautiful, right? Because it had all these rubatos and, and, and tempo changes and all that. But literally the composer, the way the, way the composer was composing was like, you know, he, he had, the, he had the, the, the picture, he had the video. I was looking at the video and just performing on top, right? And then, so no click track, nothing, just performing on top and then maybe recording the piano and then the strings and maybe the staccato woodwinds and doing is like, yeah, it didn't align because, but, but if you are, you know, if you're a good piano player, you can do that. And it's like no, no click track and which, you know, it's, it's nice because you can compose faster. You don't have to sing the tempo or anything like that. You just go with the flow and then if you are good, yeah. you can, you can make it work. And, and the music, beautiful, beautiful music. But then for us, what the, what did it what did it mean for me as an uh, you know the as a, a lot of clean cleanup. <laughs> A lot of cleanup, cleanup, and even before the cleanup, it was like doing the tempo mapping. You know, doing oh, the tempo, yeah. so so the tempo matched the matched the performance, and so that's a lot of work. So did did we make it work? Yes, uh, we 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 wrote the tempo around the performance, so it was a beautiful. And then the orchestra could see as they were performing, they could see all these tempo changes, <laughs> right? And um, it's nuts. and, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it was nuts. Uh, but we had to keep the tempo, the exact same tempo, the performance that the composer composed um, because because of the sync points, right? When they were going yeah. with the orchestra, the orchestra was doing something that, that followed yeah. the picture. And so, 
So that, that would be the backwards way of, of doing it. But because the composer had the... Uh, well, he could do it because he was hired to do it and he had the team and he had the budget so he could have people later on figuring out what tempo was that. Um, but basically, if, if, like a, we're like a small composer and then we have no MIDI cleanup assistant, uh -huh. <laughs> then we will end up being the one who is doing the cleanup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You can so. do the rubato, but then it's going to be more work later on. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, yeah, that's, that's the downside, that's the, yeah, that's the, yeah. Okay. The payoff of using a sequencer. <laughs> All right, see anyway, ya. Yeah, Thanks. <laughs>
two minutes. Right, 30 seconds. All right, let's continue. All right, so let's orchestrate this real quick. Um, let's say that it would be piano on a string. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add the. Um, do -re do -re -di, do -re -di. the beginning now just um, see what's happening here so what happens with um, this is on a strings ensemble patch right um, the attack is very slow right is a za, za, za. so what happens is that when we change well, I'm sorry when we change from one chord to the other There's like this drop T, W, E, um. So the way to avoid this is to overlap the notes. And that's what, you, what, what, what we can see here. Now, if, if, um, if these notes look like they are not overlapped, it's, it's because, let me just, it's because there's, there's pedaling here. I was using the sustain pedal, right? Um, and um, we just don't hear. The stain pedal right here, right? So when uh, it's the change which overlaps with the pedal change, right? It's cool. So that's that. I'm recording this C here. Alright, recording this. And this, we said that it was it was going to be a four that resolves the four three suspension Doring. overlap overlap a little bit. Not. Let me, see, let, let me fix this. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Mm. Mm. 
Dream. Sometimes it's better off recording everything again. Dorem, Dorem, Di, Di, Da, Dorem. these the strings now what we are gonna do is um, uh, so we've got the strings I'm gonna record some lower strings I think do -re -re -do -ra -ro -re -do -re -re -do -ra -ro -ro So enhance the texture a little bit. Um, this is um, a strings ensemble patch, and this is a strings ensemble patch just for the lower strings. And they have them separated because this has a little bit more reverb, and this has no reverb. Um, and sometimes it's good to add a little bit of reverb to, to the slightly higher pitched instruments, and less or no reverb to the low. And that's why I like having them separated. But essentially, both of them are uh, ensemble patch. Uh, it's an ensemble patch of strings. Just this one has more reverb, this, this one has less reverb. They are labeled differently, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just, I, I use this one for low, uh, for the lower, for like the cellos and double basses. Um, all right, so, do -re -di, do -ra -ro -ri, do -re, big, a little bit bigger here, adding a little bit of low frequencies. So Mark, yeah, you're using sections to start with, and then are, will you break them down to in individual instruments after you've sketched this out or? If needed, that's a great What's question. the process? That's a great question. If needed. Um, if, um, so if I want total realism, then yes. Um, if I want the, if, if the music is a little bit more complex as well, then yes. Um, this case, because basically the effect is piano and some sustained strings, um, I just break it as high strings and low strings. So this one up here is like, and that I'll 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 do something later on, um, which you'll see, which is uh, layering some of. Uh, um, so basically, what I'll do is I'm, I'm, I'll layer the violin one and the cello. Mm -hmm. So so we add a little bit of definition and we open within the sound a little bit. Um, yeah. But mm, I won't remove. I won't remove the, the strings ensemble. Um, so the strings ensemble, good and bad things. The good thing, you work, you work faster. Now a good thing is that it feels like the string section, them all performing at the same time because you are doing the dynamics at the same time. And so it feels like if they are in the same room listening to each other and reacting at the same time, uh, which is hard to record line by line because it's not linear. We record one line and then the other one. It, it, it feels more like, you know, like a step-by-step -step recording. Um, instead of them all re recorded at the same time, performing at the same time. Um, so that's the good thing, right? The bad thing is that we lose a little bit of definition and like the separation of the different elements inside the string section. Um, so that's, that's the thing that we lose. And we also lose a little bit of width. Um, yes, the lower strings sound a little bit more to the left, to the right, and the higher strings sound a little bit more to the, to the, to the left but no, it doesn't have the definition and the width that we would have if we would record each, indiv each individual instrument. So to get the best of both worlds, som mm. sometimes we, we, we combine the two, recording like the strings and sample patch, and then layering on top some of the most important sections, which would be um, the violins, just to, you know, to help a little bit like the lead voice uh, of the accompaniment, and then the cellos to sort of like compensate that uh, violins cellos right and then sometimes i if i if, if there's a part that needs some like low and support or enhancement then i'll record the double basses um 
That's it. So is it is it is is it a, like a logical realistic approach? No, it's not because if you start thinking, well, if I layer the violins on top, then it's gonna feel like you know, like the violin is just more people because of the numbers and all that. But at the end of the day, uh, we are synchestrating. And synchestration, sometimes we don't, we don't use, we don't, we, we don't, with synchestration, which is like orchestrating with sample libraries, sometimes um, we do different things. If we were orchestrating, we would, we would do it differently. But to get the same sound that you would get with the orchestra, but using sample libraries, orchestral sample libraries, sometimes we do things that don't make a lot of sense, but the sonic result is closer to than if we did what logically makes sense. That does, does it make sense? Makes perfect sense, cool. yeah. Uh, all right, so. So I can see there's more than an octave here. So I am going to um so I'm gonna have them um like cello DVC or double bass DVC um up here. Da -da 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 -da. Let me work on the piano a little bit. Um, do -re -di. I wish I had the melody separated, but what I'm gonna do is do -re -di, do -re. this is the melody. Do -re -mi -do. That works. This. So we've got this and I'm gonna do what we what I said before. I'm gonna have the violin one and it's gonna double a little bit of you. I'm gonna do this one so we're gonna go here, J and the cello legato, uh, cello, we're gonna go here, R, and then we're gonna make this B here and this one, and um, maybe the double basses, maybe. So now what I'll do is I'll select uh, five of them double click and then I can select which one I want to record. So I'm going to start with the violin legato. It's basically, it's just going to double this and it's going to make it sound more fluid. Mm.
let's see if I, we can make this a little bit more interesting. I like this. Maybe we can point this on an octave. Do, do, do. Successful, but you get the idea. Cello. Gonna put one in here. This, this just adds a little bit of definition. I messed up here. Cool. Yes, that's it. Um, all right, just then enhancing the strings a little bit. Maybe we can add a little bit of double basses towards the end. And um, yeah, So these, which is the double, double basses, uh, are recorded here, but they actually sound down an octave because this patch in particular um, sounds down an octave. And the reason why I build this patch this way is because sometimes I just copy paste the cellos with the basses because they are in octaves and then the, 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 I don't have to move the notes down because they sound down an octave. So that's, that's it. I'm gonna enhance it a little bit with, uh, with a few instruments here and there, but be a flute a second time. Celesta after the flute. No.
Do tan do re do that just velocities. Dun dun. You want to hear? Maybe a little bit of color here. Do re do da do re. That double bass is pizzicato, a tad too loud, so I'm gonna bring down this guy here. Quantize a few instruments here and there, but oops. maybe the piano actually. Um, but yeah, that would be so. I'll work. I, I, would, I would challenge you to, to go ahead and um, you have the sketch and then orchestrate it a little bit more. And um, I'll keep working on this and I'll post um, like a, like a so, so so the class is not too long. Um, I record like a Maybe minute and a half, two minutes piece where I develop this a little bit more and then I'll record a video explaining here's what I did and, and, and here's how I did it and, and all that and then I'll post it in the in the class. So that to me would be sort of like the like the like the intro and then depending on how this would develop then we um, if it was bigger then again we, we could have the the, the melody with the, um, with the violin section and all that um, in fact, you know what we could do here? Do ready, do ready, do ready, do ready, do We need a little bit of tweaking going here and make sure that sounds realistic. Uh, but uh, but yeah, mm, cool. All right, any questions? Um, another thing is like so when you're composing, I, I I'm, I'm guessing different composers do it differently. I'm not I'm not sure. Like, what do you what comes to you first? Is it melody or is it harmony or is it rhythm? For for uh, for love and sadness, usually it's gonna be either the melody or melody melody and harmonies or melody and and uh, so direction movement. Uh, for um, 
for 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 magic and fantasy, it's I have to come up with 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 both of them at the same time. But to, uh -huh. that, that that's me. Um, and for for supernatural ground there, it has to be both at the same time because sometimes the melody doesn't sound like that style until you add the harmony there. Um, for for action and all, so so like the the motor driven type of music, um, yeah. action with intensity. Um, and these sorts of styles, I usually come up with the ostinato first, with like the movement part of it, and then and also because the melody sometimes we don't even have a melody, or it's more motivic and more repetitive. So I usually come up with the important element first, um, and yeah, and there are other styles that don't have melody, like more ambient type of style. Um, sometimes horror um, doesn't have a melody. Um, so, so for like the like the, like the most not basic but like the initial styles the, those styles were we we, we talk about like the basic elements like the we have a melody and we have a harmony if we have this sketch and then we will develop it like like love and sadness and the initial styles um, usually it's yeah usually it's the melody and then I'll do the harmony um, mm -hmm. and but then there are other styles specific styles that it has it has to come up I have to think about the two at the same time. All right, so that's the end of the class. Thanks so much for attending. I hope you had a lot of fun first. I hope you got some value out of this class. I hope you enjoyed the three musical forces concept and that you learned some new things for this um, love theme, uh, positive emotions type of a style. This is the simplest of the series. Tomorrow, we're gonna do two more styles, sadness and suspense gonna be a lot of fun then we will continue with the action styles on wednesday and thursday all right thanks for all the questions we had a blast 